Um, hello, my name is Dave Dietrich and I'm a member of Team Comrie. Um, I'm going to be talking about a little bit more than just the Bogon route servers. I'm also going to be talking about Bogons and Bogon filtering and some things you need to keep in mind when filtering Bogons and some resources that both Team Cymru and um, other people make available to help you in filtering Bogons. Um, so just to start to make sure we're <coughs> Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page to start with, a BOGON, which is short for bogus network, is a prefix that should never appear in the internet routing table. Uh, there are two subtypes of BOGONs. There are the Martians, which include RFC 1918 space, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, 10-8, 119, etc. And also um, net blocks that are set aside by RFC for machine or protocol specific purposes, such as multicast and loopback. And then there are also the unallocated BOGONs, which are address blocks which uh, have not yet been assigned to a regional internet registry by IANA for handing out to customers and therefore shouldn't be appearing in the global routing table yet. Now, just because an address is a BOGON doesn't mean it can't be used inside your internal network. Now, some of you are probably thinking that, oh, that's a really strange statement. But as you'll see later on in the presentations, one of the sources for problems with Bogon filtering is uh, people forgetting this fact. So why filter Bogons at all? Well, for one reason, um, to prevent private addresses that you're using within your network from leaking out into address into the internet, which is always embarrassing. But the more practical reason is because Bogons are often used as spoof sources in spam and DDoS attacks. Uh, in 2001, while Rob Thomas was working for IBM, he did a study on DDoS attacks against um, some frequently attacked sites and discovered that um, over 60%, it was actually closer to 68% of the attacks were being sourced from Bogon uh, source addresses. Now that was four years ago and you're probably thinking that that number has gone down since a lot of people are now doing Bogon filtering. And yeah, it has, but it hasn't gone away altogether. Um, one, one DDoS attack that someone was kind enough to give me access to the data for showed that 12% of the traffic was coming from uh, Bogon sources, and another couple of attacks had between 4 and 5% of them coming. Now, to be fair, uh, attacks today that involve Bogons are kind of the exception and not the rule, and that just goes to show that miscreants use what works. They've, they've discovered that um, they don't get as much return on investment for spoofing Bogon sources and therefore don't do it as often. But if we were all to stop filtering Bogons, the trend would probably reverse itself. So why shouldn't you filter Bogons? Well, this is an example of why not. Um, Team Cymru receives between two and four emails of this nature per month. Uh, since we have a lot of data available on Bogons, people seem to think this is all our fault. But a lot of the complaints go like this. I'm a director of network services at a university. We just got new IP numbers in the 70 slash 8 block, and we've already encountered six places that are using your Bogon filters and blocking us. Well, 70, this, this particular email was received in, received in early December, and 70 slash 8 was allocated back in January, and we always update our lists as soon as the announcements come out, but uh, people tend to forget and don't update their lists, and there have been a lot of assignments since 70 slash 8, so odds are these people aren't just blocking uh, just this university. And the point to take away from this is that Bogon filters need to be updated, and in fact they need to be updated fairly frequently. Uh, the primary reason for this is because unallocated space never remains unallocated forever. It's eventually assigned by ANA to the regional registries for use. And if you look at the past, um, this is a brief summary of the past two years, um, partial, you see it's uh, roughly a few, few subnets per quarter are allocated out. And in fact, um, just last Thursday, IANA uh, assigned 124 through 126 to APNIC. So if you're sitting here bored to death by my presentation, you might want to take the opportunity to make sure your filters are up to date. And also note at the end, uh, in April 2003, um, APNIC returned 223 to IANA. So it, the updates aren't always just removing things from, Bogon, from your Bogon filters. Sometimes you have to put things back in. Uh, Martians don't change nearly as often, but they do occasionally change as well. One example being when 192.88.99 was assigned for use in uh, 64 relays by RFC 3068. So uh, you can't get away with just saying, I'm not going to filter um, unallocated space, I'll just filter Martians. Um, 
So the best way to deal with this is to use some form of automated method to keep your bogon filters up to date. Um, otherwise, human nature being what it is, you'll put off an update for a day, which becomes a week, which becomes a month, which becomes a year, and then we receive more uh, complaints. Um, and Team Cymru offers some resources to help you doing this, but before we get into that, I have to add our standard disclaimer, which is to know your network. Uh, never just take our templates and apply them blindly to your network um, without understanding what you're doing and what you're filtering. Uh, a, common, a common problem we seem to hear about is people taking our Bogon lists, applying them to their external ma mail relays, and um, suddenly discovering that they're filtering all they're blocking all the mail from their internal ma mail relays and not understanding why mail comes to a halt within their organization. So, you know, be careful what you're filtering. So, um, one of the first resources we offer to help with Bogon filtering is the uh, Bogon route servers, which are a group of routers um, that advertise the uh, Bogon prefixes to their peers via, via EVGB multi-hop. Uh, through a couple of config tricks, uh, peers can configure their routers to take these prefixes and automatically start, automatically drop traffic to the bogons uh, based on the prefixes they receive. Uh, the beauty of this approach is that when IANA makes an update to um, and assigns a uh, prefix for use by an RIR and RFC, we simply stop advertising uh, the prefix from our route servers and therefore you stop um, blocking it, and you don't have to do anything on your side to account for the change. And obviously there's some other qualifications to that, but you can read all about the, read all about the project at our webpage, Kimru slash BGP slash Bogon RS. Uh, some technical data on the um, Bogon route servers. We currently have six of them online, four in the US, two in Europe. Um, there's going to be a seventh one coming online about any minute now. And uh, two, a second uh, in Europe, by the way. And thanks to a recent donation, we're going to be having Internet 2 presence in the near future. Uh, one place we're, we're notably lacking in presence is Asia Pack. So if you're interested in helping out and can donate a few U of space and an IP address, uh, we'd be very interested in talking to you after the presentation sometime. Um, how popular are the route servers? Well, we currently have 507 peering sessions spread across 228 different ASNs. Uh, our peers range from Ma and Pa shops and basement multi homers all the way up to international network service providers, so uh, we're fairly well represented. Uh, some people ask, well, can we see the configs of your route servers? How do we know they're secure? Well, we don't share the uh, we don't share the route server configs, but um, all of our route servers, and they're all Cisco routers, by the way. Um, are configured based on two templates we use, which are our secure iOS templates and our secure BGP templates, both of which are available on our website at kimru.com slash documents. And uh, if you take those two templates, put them together, you'll have about 80% of the route server configurations and see how we secure them. So how does one use uh, BGP routes to uh, filter traffic? Well, this is a simple, this is a bare bones, um, iOS config example. Uh, first off, you have to peer with our route servers, which I haven't included here. But then you have to configure BGP community new format so you're receiving the uh, communities that we advertise with the Bogon prefixes. Uh, you define a route, um, black hole route. We like to use 192.0.2.1 and uh, set that to null zero and then find a community list saying, uh, match our ASN, which is always 65333, and our com Bogon community, which is 888. And then simply a route map saying that anything that matches um, <coughs> matches that ASN and community gets set to next hop of um, your black hole route. And bingo, you've just filtered, you've just black holed all traffic from the uh, Bogon prefixes. Um, here's a Juniper example, slightly abbreviated, because Juniper doesn't lend itself to PowerPoint very well. Uh, but it's basically the same. Basically the same thing. You define a uh, route one a two zero two one in this case, mark discard, which is the equivalent of routing to null zero. Um, define the define a uh, tag for the community and the ASN, and then you simply define a policy statement saying any routes you receive from us, from BGP, from RAS, with our community, set the next hop to uh, your null route. Now, those are bare bones um, examples, and you can get a lot more, um, 
lot more involved with it. So we have uh, much more detailed and commented uh, sample configs on our website for Cisco, Juniper, and OpenBGP. Um, one new thing that we're about to introduce, we were hoping to have it done by today, but didn't happen, is that we're going to be start um, advertising the Bogons um, with multiple communities. So that if you are if you want to do take different actions based on whether a Bogon is a Martian or an unallocated, uh, you can filter based on the uh, communities listed here. We're, all the all the routes will of course retain their 888 community tag. So if you want to filter everything, you don't have to change anything. And this is going to be done probably, I'm guessing, within a week. Uh, one thing people don't seem to realize is that you can always use prefix lists to block the routes you'll accept, to accept from us before they get black holed. So if you're using um, 192.168 for something super critical in your infrastructure and don't want any possibility of it getting blocked, then <clears throat> just put together a prefix list and say that you won't accept that route from us. Uh, likewise, some people ask, well, what prevents you from advertising a non-Bogon and making us filter that without our knowledge? Uh, well, that's a fair concern, and if you're if you're concerned about that, then you can uh, you can define a prefix list um, blocking our advertisements to just the existing Bogons, and then when updates take place, unless it's an addition, but um, when normal updates take place, we'll just still cease advertising the route, and nothing will change. Um, but some people just don't want to peer with our Bogon route service at all, which is perfectly fair. So we have some other um, resources available for people to monitor Bogon lists. Um, we maintain text text lists, both aggregated and unaggregated, of current Bogons that people that are ideal for downloading and importing into your own scripts uh, to build your own templates. Uh, we also have bind and Jun bind templates and Juniper and Cisco prefix lists to show you examples of how to filter Bogons uh, without relying on a route server. And then we also have objects defined in various databases like RADB, the RIPE, NCC, and DNS. So if you have code that's already querying, say, the RADB for certain networks for your network policy, uh, you can just reuse the code to query the current, build a current list of Bogons. And then last but not least, um, we have a mailing list available, Bogon Announce, such that whenever there's a uh, change in the uh, Bogons, we will post, we will send out announcements and um, inform you of it. And all of the details on all of these are available at uh, kimru.com slash bogons. Uh, one request, if you are going to filter bogons, please do so in a responsible manner. Um, take the time to inform your staff and your help desk what you're doing. If you have a uh, knowledge base, internal knowledge base, put in a few entries on what bogons are and why you're filtering them. And try to make your um, error messages to your customers somewhat readable. This is an example of um, one guy who took our um, Bogon list and filtered his mail servers and borked it. And um, <coughs> all his customers suddenly started receiving emails, basically unedited versions of this. And they, they, of course, all started writing us going, what the hell are you doing? And who the hell are you? And why are you filtering all our email? So, yeah. We, we, we love to help out where we can, but we don't have the resources to be your help desk. <laughs> so, um, as always, there's copious informa additional information available on the web. Um, the official list we use comes from IANA of what is and is not Bogon, and you can download that yourself through um, their web page. Um, there's our Bogon reference page at kimru.com slash bogons. Um, Team Cymru makes the... Um, limits our definition of Bogons to what has and has not been assigned by IANA. Uh, Complete Who Is goes deeper and tracks what um, tracks what has and has not been assigned by the RIRs for use um, by customers. And um, there's both positives and negatives to that approach. So, But he does have a lot of very interesting data on his website. So you can read both our site, our site and his site and um, choose which one you like better. If you're interested in... Um, Bogons on IPv6 space. Um, there's an excellent site on SixNet about that. And the um, CIDR report always has a section on Bogons that are being advertised uh, into the global routing table. Uh, some more links. RIPE has an interesting project called DBogon, uh, which when they were assigned the um, 85 8 network, 
um, by Anna. They, app, they set up a few test networks before handing out to the customers, to their customers, to um, track how many people were filtering it over time and how, quick, how quickly people updated their filters. And there's some pretty interesting data there. Um, I'd be interested to see, hopefully they're going to continue the project, then the next time they um, are assigned address space, I'd love to see how the, how the uh, curve compares now to then. Um, the technique I showed you earlier for configuring your Cisco to, is, um, is a variation of a technique called remote triggered black hole filtering, which is um, very useful, even if you have no interest in bogon filtering, is very, is very useful for uh, addressing DDoS attacks within your network. So uh, Barry Green has put together a very interesting, uh, a very useful paper on it, which is available at this URL, and I encourage you to download it and read it. And um, he's also put together some prefix filter templates, which show how to filter not only bogons, but um, other, um, other incoming traffic out your edge. And uh, Steve Gill of Team Cymru has done the same thing for Juniper, uh, both of which are very useful documents to uh, review. And that's it. Um, any questions?